All right, we're going to be starting a series of exercises based on creating surfaces. And from the surfaces, we can generate some solids. So it's a different type of modeling. You can get some complex shapes um, from these uh, techniques. So I'm pulling from the Learning Center some self-guided uh, tutorials for these exercises. So this is the first of three. We're going to be making what they call a cap. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is start a sketch on the right plane. So I'll go ahead and select that and then click sketch to start a sketch. And then I'm going to right click and view normal to sketch plane. I'm going to go ahead and press the P key to hide all the planes. All right, so we're supposed to be um, sketching an arc that is symmetrically uh, mirrored on both sides of the point of origin. So we're going to go ahead and start a sketch with a curve here. It's an arc, actually. And the other tip was that we're supposed to be horizontally aligned for the beginning and the end. I'm going to purposely not do it symmetric on both sides. So here we have an arc, and we've accomplished the first one of the uh, requirements was that it be horizontally aligned at the beginning and end with the point of origin. So that's good, but it's supposed to be mirrored on both sides. So this needs to be shifted over. I'm going to use a constraint for that. So we want to be symmetric. We want this arc to be symmetric. So to do that, I'm, you need to choose the line that you want to be symmetric to and then the two endpoints of the curve. All right, we get an error it says symmetry constraint requires a line and two other geometries of the same type. So I don't want to create a line just for that purpose. I'm going to just reveal the front plane and use that as my line. So we'll go ahead and select that first. And then the two points of the arc. So now it is symmetrically aligned. And then I'm going to uh, do some dimensioning here. So this is supposed to be 100. And then the distance from each end of the arc to the other is supposed to be 80. All right, so that's our first sketch. I'll go ahead and check the check mark there to accept that. Then we're going to start another sketch, this time on the right plane, actually the front plane. Are we on the front? No. So here we go. We're going to sketch on the front plane this time. Start a sketch. Right click, view normal to sketch plane. That's going to rotate us around. And now we need to create another arc, but then a, a horizontal construction line. So I'm going to start with that horizontal construction line. I'm enabling construction here and then starting with the line tool. Click to place my line, make sure it's horizontal. Press escape to get out of that tool. Then I need an arc connected to that. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to that arc tool. And then uh, the beginning point should be below the point of origin, so anywhere below that. And then we're going to attach the other end to the construction line. It's supposed to be an arc, so I'll just click there. Escape out of that tool. So there's some constraints that are going to help with this. So I'm going to click on the tangent constraint. The arc and the line should be tangent. And then we're going to be using a different constraint called Pierce. So Pierce will align something with another drawing. So in this case, we have this little thing represents. I'll go ahead and orbit so you can see it. So these two intersect somewhere along this arc, these two planes. 
So what I want to do is attach this line at that point of intersection. So that's called a Pierce relationship. So I want where the two lines meet, the construction and the arc. I want to click that and then pierce my other drawing. So it's going to align it. It's going to attach it right there. Go ahead and view normal to sketch again. And then all I need to do from this point is dimension what I've drawn so far. So the radius is 400. And then the distance between the point of origin and the base of this arc should be 10. So that's going to shrink it down quite a bit. So now that I've shrunk everything down, I'm going to go ahead and escape out of the tools and move my measurements closer so they make a little bit more sense here. All right, so the length of the construction line doesn't matter, but here we have this arc. Go ahead and click the check mark. Now we're going to create a surface. Go ahead and orbit. So now that we're creating something that has a three-dimensional property, whoa, go back to view about right there. What I'm going to do is sweep this arc along this path to create a surface. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that sweep tool, click on that arc, the first arc that we drew, and then choose the box for sweep path and select the second sketch. Now we have a complex curve in our uh, surface here. It's curving two di different directions, as you can see there. All right, so we're done with that surface. I'll go ahead and hide it for now. So click the check mark, and we're going to click the eyeball just to hide it. And now we're going to create a sketch on the top plane. Go ahead and start a sketch. View normal sketch plane. I'm going to go ahead and hide the uh, planes. And what we're going to be doing here is sketching a simple oval or an ellipse. So we're going to be, the only thing we need to make sure is that it is horizontally aligned to the point of origin. So go ahead and reference the point of origin and drag over. Make sure it's horizontally aligned. Click to start. We don't know any dimensions yet, so I'm just going to go yay big. All right, so now I'm going to put in my dimensions, which will make everything the way it should be. So dimensioning uh, an ellipse is just like dimensioning a rectangle. So you can do the long side just by clicking on it. It's supposed to be 110. And then you click on the short side. This is 60. And then the distance between the point of origin and the center is 60. All right, we're done sketching the oval, so I'm going to click the check mark. And then I'm going to go ahead and orbit again so I can see this. I like to view it from this angle. All right, now I'm going to extrude. So the extrude button is here. I'm going to select the line. So that would create a surface instead of a solid. I'm going to go back one step. So if I click extrude and click the center, so 
that would assume I want to create a solid. Let me go back in and select the edge. So this assumes I want to create a surface. So if, if you're extruding a line that was going to, is going to create a surface, if you're extruding a region, an enclosed region, that will uh, create a solid. So we're working with surfaces in these exercises. So we, we have extruded this ellipse as a surface. And we want to extrude it both directions, above and below the line. So I'm going to select um, symmetric from the option. And then this is going to be 50 millimeters, 5, 0. And then click the check mark to accept that. So now I have two surfaces this ellipse shape, and then the complex curve that we created. So we'll go ahead and reveal both of them. And you see they intersect. So we're going to use each of our surfaces to trim the other one. We're going to start by trimming this one. So to find the trim tool, actually split, sorry. Split that. And this is the surface that we want to split. And then entity to split with it is your tool. So I'm going to choose this oval as my tool. And I want to keep the tools. So if I don't select this, it will get rid of the oval. I want to keep that. So I'm going to select that to keep it and select the check mark. So we have successfully split. Um, I can hide surface one to show you. Now this is split into two surfaces. So now we're going to do the same process with the ellipse and split that. So when you select that to split, and then choose entity to split with, and choose the outside uh, surface, not the inside. So click that. And then if you select keep tools, it would keep that outside, but I know I want to get rid of that eventually. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle that off. And then press the check mark. So I've successfully trimmed away the excess of the surface. But I have an extra surface in here that I want to get rid of. So if you're not sure which one, sometimes the order of the surfaces is a little bit different. So I want to keep surface 2 and get rid of surface 3. So I'm going to use the delete part tool. So I'm going to click that and select surface 3. And then just choose the check mark. So these are the two surfaces that are making the appearance of my cap. So I want to combine these two together. So I'm going to use a boolean function and the union to union them together and then just select the two surfaces and then the check mark. All right, this is our cap shape, but I want to add a little something special along the edge there. So I'm going to use this uh, the fillet tool, click on the edge of the cap, and I've already done this before so my settings are correct. So I want a 5 millimeter uh, radius, and instead of circular, I want to change that to curvature so that I can do a magnitude of 0.5. Click the check mark to accept that. So this is my cap. So I want to uh, use this to create a solid. So if you have any surface that is not an enclosed space, so we have an opening at the bottom here. To make this a solid, I can use the thicken tool. So right here is the thicken tool. then choose the part, 
go ahead and choose a surface. So already you can see it started to thicken. I'm going to just change the um, the amount to two point five millimeters, and you want the direction to be inward, not outward. So you could choose to thicken outwardly, so outside of the surface or you could reverse it and do on the inside. Go ahead and press the check mark and it automatically absorbed the surface but if that didn't happen for you the last step would be to go ahead and delete that extra surface from your work area. That concludes this exercise.